What's up guys, Perry from Rockville here and today I'm going to show you how to set up the Mini RF4 LED wash light. They come in two colors of silver and black but the setup for each is the exact same. So as you can see it comes with the light itself with a bracket already attached to the light, a wireless RF remote and a charger. Now there are many ways that we can physically have the lights set up with one of the ways being wall washing. So with the rubber feet at the bottom of the light you can place it against your wall with the light shining completely upward or you can place the light a few inches away from your wall and use the mounting bracket to angle it so that the light is hitting the wall the way you want. You can also use a similar approach when lighting up your DJ facade. So you can either place it right against the DJ facade or a few inches away and angle the light and depending on how big your facade is you can use multiple of these lights for a much more illuminated effect. You can also use the light to light up a totem stand like our very own RTP32W. For that setup, you would want to lift up the scrim at the bottom of the totem stand, place the light on the base of the stand, and lower the scrim back down. We can also use the light as a table light for any bottles or other pieces to light them up. And depending on how you have your light set up, you can even take the bracket off for a sleeker look. You can also use the bracket to mount your light onto a truss. To do that, you would need a lighting clamp like our very own LC70. Take off the bolt here on the bottom of the clamp, then run your bolt through the hole here on your bracket, and screw the clamp back on. From here, we're going to want to loosen the butterfly screw on your clamp. Then we can line the clamp up on a spot on our truss, and tighten the butterfly screw to secure the light onto the truss. And since this light is battery powered, we won't have to worry about running any cables to power our light. You can tell how much battery life your light has by looking at the LED indicator right next to the power button. So when this light is lit up green, that means the battery life is anywhere from 100 to 75%. If the light is orangish yellow, that means we're at 75 to 50% battery. When this light turns red, that means we have 50 to 25% battery. And then the light will start blinking red when it's at 25 to 0%. There's also an LED indicator on the charger for your light that will blink red when it's charging. And once it turns green, that means we're fully charged. So now let's go ahead and turn on our light using the power button. Now you can also use the power button to switch your light to three different modes. There's the RF mode that's indicated by the solid color here on your RF light. We can double click this button to switch the light to master mode, which is indicated by the RF light blinking once. And we can double click it again to switch the light to slave mode. We can also short press this button to switch the RF group for the light. Now this feature is very important because this allows us to use the master slave function as well as our remote. So I can short press this button to switch the RF group to either red, green, yellow, or blue. And then in order to control the light with my remote, I'm going to want to press this RF group button to set it to the same color. So for example, if the light is set to the red RF group, I'm going to want to press the RF group button on my light till we get to the red setting, which is indicated by the light on the remote itself. Then from here, we can use the remote to control all of the features of the light. You can also set the RF group on your remote to white to control all of your lights together no matter which RF group they're in. So if I had lights set up to each RF group, I can set this to white and control all of them at once. So if we take a look at the remote here next to the RF group, we have the on and off button to turn the LEDs of the light off or back on. And the really cool thing is if we have the LEDs off for more than two hours at a time, the light will automatically turn off to conserve battery. Below that we have these color wheel buttons here that we can use to set our light to certain colors. So for example, I can press on the green color wheel here. And from here I can use these up and down buttons to switch the shade of green. Next to that we have the up and down buttons to control the brightness for our light. So if I lowered it, the light will be less bright. And then the more I raise it, the brighter the light will be. Next to that, we have four different sound modes that we can use, starting with sound mode one. And now you can tell as I make noise, the light will change color. Next, we have sound mode two, where the light will pulse between each color as their sound picked up. Then we have sound mode three, where the light will strobe between each color as their sound. And then we have sound mode four, which is also a strobe with a white light. We can even lower the sensitivity for the built-in mic that picks up the sound to change the color. So the lower I raise that, the less reactive the light is, and the higher I raise this, the more reactive the light is. Next, we have four different preset modes for our light. So if I have a color set and press strobe, the light will start strobing to that color. Next, we have the pulse mode where the light will pulse between each color. Then we have the fade mode where the light will fade between each color. And then we have the standard color cycle mode. 
Above that we have the up and down speed buttons that we can use to adjust the speed of these modes. So the higher I have this setting in the color cycle mode, the faster the colors will cycle. And as I lower this setting, you'll see that the colors start to cycle slower. Now what's also really cool is that we can control our lights with a wireless DMX controller. For that setup, I'm gonna make sure that both of my lights are on and turn on my DMX controller. I'm then gonna wanna make sure that my lights are set to the same RF group by short pressing the power button. So for today, let's set them to the red RF group. Then I wanna make sure that my controller is set to the same RF group as well. After that, I'm gonna to wanna to double press the power button on each light so that we activate slave mode. After that, you'll see the RF lights blink twice, letting us know the lights are in slave mode. And lastly, I'm gonna to wanna to activate scanner one on my DMX controller. So now we can go through each fader and see what they do for our lights. Fader one will set the overall brightness for our lights. So for today, let's raise that all the way up. Next, we have fader two to control the red LEDs. So the more I raise that, the more red you'll see coming through. Next, we have fader three to control the green LEDs. Fader four to control the blue LEDs. Fader five to control the white LEDs. Fader 6 to control the amber LEDs, and Fader 7 to control the ultraviolet LEDs. So we can use faders 2 through 7 to set our light to a single color, or we can mix and match these faders to make a customized color. So for example, I can raise a bit of Fader 2, a little bit of Fader 4, and then Fader 6, and then all of a sudden I have a customized color. Next to that we have Fader 8 to control the stroke for the light, so the more I raise it, the more the lights will start strobing. Now fader 9 is really cool because it will activate a preset mode depending on where we leave the fader. So for example, if I set this fader anywhere from 120 to 159, it's gonna activate the color pulse mode. And lastly, we have fader 10 to control the speed for these modes. So the more I raise it in the color pulse mode, the faster the colors will pulse. If you ever get confused, you can refer to the DMX guide to see which fader does what and which values activate which mode for fader nine, which you can also refer to using the screen on your DMX controller. Now, if you wanted to set up multiple of these lights but didn't want to use a DMX controller, you can always use the master slave function to do so. So to start, I'm gonna wanna see which light I wanna use as my master light. So for today, let's go with this one in the corner here. We're then gonna go ahead and turn on each of our lights. Set each of our lights except for the master light to slave mode by double tapping the power button twice. And then we'll wanna short press the power button to make sure they're set to the same RF group. For today, let's use the red RF group here. So now let's turn on our master light. So when we set up our master light here, we're gonna wanna make sure to set it to the regular RF mode so we can use it with our remote. And don't forget, you'll wanna have the remote set up to the same RF group as well. Now from here, I can set my light to any mode or color. And once I have it set up, I'm going to set the master light to master mode by double tapping the power button once. And now you'll see that all of the other lights start to follow. If you ever wanted to make any adjustments, you'll have to set your master light back to the regular RF mode and once you're done, you're gonna to wanna to set it back to master. And once again, all of your other lights will follow suit. What's also really cool is that we can use the master slave function to set up multiple groups of lights. So to do this, I'm gonna follow the same exact steps, but I'm going to assign a master light to this group here and this group here. So for these lights, I'm gonna to wanna to set them to one RF group, so let's go with red here. And then I'm gonna to wanna to set these lights up to another group, so let's use green here. Now for the master light of each group, I'm gonna to wanna to set them to RF mode so I can use the remote with these lights. So first I set the RF group on my remote to red so I can work with the master light on this side. And then with the same remote, I can set the RF group to green to work with the other side. And once I have these lights set the way I want, I can double tap each of them to set them to master mode. And now you'll see that each group is doing their own thing. So this is really cool because not only can I use all of the RF groups to set up multiple groups of light, but I can also use one remote to control all of these groups. And don't forget, I can always set my remote to the all RF group so I can control my lights that are in RF mode. So hopefully this showed you guys how easy it is to set up the mini RF4 LED wash lights. But of course, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to reach out to our customer support team through phone or email. As always, I'm Perry from Rockville, and we'll see you guys next time.